Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the world famous comedy store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony. I am Trav. Yeah. How exciting. Whoa, that Whoa. sounds like applause. That's oh, my goodness. That was that was in- interesting. Big hands. That was the effect. A lot of big <laughs> hands in the room tonight. It's a big hand audience. Wow. Yeah. Hi, Red Band. Hey, Tony. How are you? Good. Good. The great Ryan J. Ebelt is here, everybody. Look at that. Whoa, there's the turn in the wave. RyanJEbelt.com for every print, every poster in Kill Tony history, every single episode of the show. A couple of cool new t-shirts. RyanJEbelt.com. He's doing auctions, a bunch of fun stuff. An incredible artist. He's already started drawing this evening's episode. The great Charlie from Vito's Pizza is here, Woo-hoo. everyone. Yummy. Keeping us all nice and chubby, ready to go on a burn it off on an e-bike ride. <laughs> yeah. I've been eating Vito's all week. I'm going to be honest with you. I broke the bubble and went to a little party uh, okay. this week on a very small gathering of about, uh, you know, nine people. And I decided to get some amazing catering from Vito's Pizza. And by God, if I wasn't the goddamn star of the fucking party... Who doesn't love baked ziti on a 115 degree (laughs) Fahrenheit day? There was also salad, the mini breadsticks. Um, Absolutely incredible. Vito's Pizza located here in West Hollywood on La Cienega between Santa Monica and Melrose and also in the city of Santa Monica. I like a hot salad. That's right. We know that you love a hot salad. You know what else I love? Caveman coffee, giving me energy and keeping me strong and healthy. Use the promo code Kill Tony and get 15% off. I'm excited about tonight's episode. We have five people that signed up for the bucket. We are going to pull out four of them tonight and see what happens. And in the meanwhile, before we get to all this insanity, let's hear a little bit about tonight's amazing sponsors. And we're back! How exciting. Uh, I love we it. have a guest tonight, and I'm excited about this guest. Fresh off of America's Got Talent. This is a guy I've been doing stand-up with for over a decade, roasting around and with for over a decade, a roast battle defender. And again, I mean, absolutely killed it on uh, like the best of America's Got Talent. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is. Alex Hooper, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, it's Alex Hooper. Alex Hooper is back in the saddle again, fresh off of America's Got Talent. I watched this most recent performance. It is incredible how you handle that big giant stage, sitting in a throne, reading everybody, uh, roasting nursery rhymes. You lit these people up. It was so great. Love the Simon Cowell e-bike jokes. We have a lot of running (laughs) e-bike jokes here. Um, You made fun of someone that I've actually roasted before who handles it so well, the great Terry Crews, one of my favorite humans. And, uh, And you were just ruthless. I mean, some of it was truly like, you know, real incinerator roast jokes. You were going for some of the oohs and the ahs. I was surprised that they let me get away with some of that. And some of the things that they turned down that they said were too harsh, yeah. I was like, do you understand how much worse yeah. what I'm about to say <laughs> is? Yeah, yeah. And their producer, they're like, nope, the executives say, don't say Columbia has a cocaine problem. Just make fun of Sophia's face. Right. I was like, it's, what? How is that better? It was incredible. <laughs> the executives have no idea what's going on in the world. They are completely out of touch. And that's exactly the vibe that I got. I'm like, oh, they probably told him not to do other jokes. And that's why this seems more evil than it even should. And yeah, he just confirmed it. So exciting stuff. Uh, perhaps one of the greatest roast performances um, in America's Got Talent history. And what you've been on that what like two three four huh? that was my that was my third performance wow. on the show yeah I got kicked off in 2018 uh, <laughs> with a pretty uh, got buzzed the entire way through three thousand people screamed at me for seven straight minutes That's came great. back this season for redemption and made it all the way to the live shows and yeah that was the one on last Tuesday was live in front of ten wow. million people with jokes I'd never told before wow so. I would have loved to have seen what you had up your sleeve. Uh, <sighs> for more because I could tell if you're going to say I have more for the next round I'm like oh fuck I know yeah. what that's like like you know to 
to have something up your sleeve big and just hope that it's going to take you to the next thing to win it. Are you getting recognized now everywhere? That seems like one of those shows that you'll... Only the top half of my face. <laughs> Nobody can recognize what's going on down at the bottom, but they're like, I think I know your eyes. And you have a really popular pug calendar that was on Ellen and stuff like that. Yoga, uh, pug yoga, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. My my, uh, I have a rescued Korean pug. Her name is Kimchi because, of course, it is. Isn't that you? Don't you have a rescue Korean as well? No, yeah, but she's uh, <laughs> twenty six female. Uh, they came from the same litter, though. So, <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. Speaking of calendars, uh, I know who the uh, who the some of the worst calendar salesmen on the planet are. They are also the band. <laughs> Here on Kill Tony, they chose 2020 to debut their paper calendar <laughs> of all the years. 2020. They, I believe there are still hundreds available. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm going to bring them out right now. Every single episode, they commit to being different characters. We never know what they're going to be. They've been in the back the whole time getting ready. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going to be in character the whole show. Can't wait to see who we're hanging out with tonight. It's the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, Jetski, Jesse Johnson, and Chroma Chris. Here we go. Whoa. Oh. Okay. Whoa. Serial killers. I know these guys for sure. This is Jack the Ripper, without a doubt. One of the most famous serial killers of all time. A famous Kill Tony character who's known for saying, I'm Jack the Ripper. Here he is. Jack, how are you doing today? I'm Jack the Ripper. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Glad that you're back. One of the most... Uh, one of the most... Uh, semi-famous uh, characters in all of serial killing history. There he is. Jack the Ripper, a.k.a. the Penguin from Tim Burton's Batman, <laughs> a.k.a. the Baba Duke. I just watched over the, uh, the serial killer roast uh, yesterday, actually, for my Patreon Roastmaster class. I went over character roasting and uh, talked about you, and it was a lot of fun. That was a good time there, wasn't it? I was Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, you are very convincing, Jeffrey Dahmer. All I had to do was wear glasses and part my hair to the side, and it was uh, frightening. I know this <laughs> young lady. I know everything about her. I always did. I loved your movie Monster. And on top of all the research that I've done on you before, a brand new Jim Can't Swim came out last month about you. The great, the powerful Eileen Wernos is here, straight from <laughs> hooking on the streets of Florida, murdering innocent Johns. How are you, Eileen? They were innocent, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard Eileen giggle like that after calling someone a motherfucker. Uh, Chroma Chris very clearly is uh, evil Jesus Christ tonight. <laughs> hey, Tony, it's your buddy Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, I had to come back because I heard the world was on the brink of that race war I was trying to start. Oh, wow. So what do you think about it? Are you having fun in it? Hell yeah, Tony. Hell to Skelter, baby. Okay, very good. Absolutely. That is what that guy would say. And then clearly back here, very, very famous, uh, very famous serial killer, everybody. It is uh, Jennifer Lopez without makeup. Here she is. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is Richard Ramirez. Am I correct? That's right. Tony, hail Satan. Oh, you guys all worship Satan like that? Yeah, you know, he's giving out sponsorships and uh, <laughs> we got chosen. Okay. What have you been up to lately, Richard Rodriguez? Uh, Ramirez. Oh, that's right. Ramirez. I get all you guys confused. <laughs> oh, you know, it, there's not a lot to do in prison, but a lot of reading. Yeah. That's about it. Okay. Well, welcome, welcome. Bunch of serial killers here. Alex Hooper, Red Band on the soundboard, Ryan J. Everybody's in position. So let's start the show, shall we? Yay, everybody. Yeah. yeah. All right. I could go to the bucket, but instead I'm going to start the show with a big red bang. Everybody, this guy, controversial character, uh, loved by us. Um, a lot of people um, write handwritten letters to the comedy store pleading for uh, him to no longer be allowed here. But we throw those <laughs> in the trash before management can read them because I absolutely love this guy. I Fell in love with him the first time I saw him, and uh, here he has been 
being groomed and built like a young, young child in a pedophile ring here at the comedy <laughs> store. But he's being built artistically um, as one of the longest tenured regulars in the history of the show. So who else can we count on to count on to start the show like the big red machine, the Memphis Strangler, the great, the powerful William Montgomery. Uh, if you come at me with a business idea and your pitch isn't as just like the Tour de France, but with rollerblades, keep moving, pal. Uh, the coolest thing about Bill and Ted is that they both turned out to have incredible careers. Uh, research shows more kids are being homeschooled this year rather than being enrolled in public and private schools. This is not good news according to the nation's school shooters. Uh, you know, when Dale Earnhardt died, they held a race in his honor because it's how he was best remembered as a racer. And then for George Floyd, guess what we decided to do? Uh... What's the best part about telling a racist joke on Kill Tony? I've got three weeks to go into hiding. <laughs> That's all I got. There you go. Ooh, That's a minute right there. Wow, there you go. William Montgomery coming out, guns a blazing. Joke, 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 joke. How are you, William? I'm fine. I still have the same uh, shorts. Yes, you do. Has anybody sent you shorts? <laughs> Has anybody sent you any shorts? No, no. No, still no. What did your father say after we talked to him last week about your shorts situation? Has, have you talked to him in the middle of this week at all? It's been a pretty controversial week for you, has it not? I did. My sweet friend David, uh, after the podcast Wednesday, told my father I have a bad drinking problem. So yeah, oh, what? that you? That we means... we talked about that. I almost had to go back to Memphis, it, but I've stopped drinking now. Oh, you've completely stopped. I'm done. Why are you sweating so much then? Because he stopped drinking. <laughs> did you? When did you? Stop? Yeah, because I stopped drinking. When's the last time you had a drink? Be honest with us. We've always had your back. Be honest here. This is an honest chamber. What is today? Monday? Yeah. Um, today. Saturday, maybe? What time Saturday? Today? Saturday. So like late Friday night or into Saturday. Early into Saturday morning? Early into Saturday morning. And then when did you stop drinking? Probably 4 uh, a.m. Saturday. 4 a.m. Saturday morning. And then what time did you wake up Saturday afternoon? Uh, 7 o'clock. P.M.? P.M. You slept to the evening time. I did. It was hot as shit. And then what'd you do when you woke up at 7 p.m. on Saturday? It seems like there's only one thing to do. Uh, I actually, my mom sent me a crock pot. I actually ate leftovers oh. from the crock pot. Wow. wow. What so you, those what, are meat sweats. They're chicken, yeah, chicken meat sweats. He's lying to us. He made moonshine in that crock pot. <laughs> He's <laughs> liquored up right now. I once cooked an Asian woman's head in a crock pot. Is that true, uh, Richard uh, Ramirez? Because I'm pretty sure you just killed your parents. No, that's the Menendez brothers. Oh, that's right. What, well, that's... you know so much about the white murderers on this show, you think you'd give... And Richard a... Ramirez was sort of overrated, though, right? Didn't he only kill, like... He was cool. I really... I liked he him. Kill it? 14 uh, people. A serial killer with a gun is just and a I pussy tortured anyway, a bunch of you know? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> How many people did he kill? Really, 14? Yeah, and then I tortured a bunch of other ones. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I'm the, no, it's cool. I, I'm Gosh. the overrated one, Tony. I killed nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a bunch of young people do the dirty work for you, didn't you? You're like a Bernie Sanders uh, type. Yeah, just fill them up with acid. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Why'd you put that mask on the microphone, you bitch, before you spoke into it? William, be nice to... Uh, I know. Well, we got into a fight uh, yesterday, so... You did? I sort of lost some respect for him. Did your dad really almost make you move back to Memphis? Yeah, and... Uh, Sounds like a Bruce Springsteen song. Moving me. back to Memphis! <laughs> and the almost American took me to Birmingham, way. Alabama. M and David hasn't talked to me. David, you need to talk to me. 
What's going on? Did your dad watch the episode? Uh, I talked to my father the <laughs> other day. He said, you're moving to Memphis. Come my way. Whoa. I hate. Fun fact, I hate Bruce Springsteen. I Me love music, also. and I despise Bruce Springsteen. Jesus. Is that a Bruce Springsteen song? Bonner Run. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. That's the one. Yeah, you play it just as horribly as he would. Yeah, Bruce and Rick Springfield. Like the two, like th- they were like almost clones. Wait, almost. Rick Springfield has uh, Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo <laughs> Soldiers. I don't yeah, like Buffalo either. Soldiers. I loved Rick Springfield's. Uh, he Buffalo was a soldier. Buffalo Soldier. <laughs> Coming Rick to Spring- America. <laughs> hey, here we go. Let's let's wait for Jeremiah to find that note again. <laughs> hey, there you go. Ooh. All right, all right. There you go. We got it. We got it. All right. So, Don't underestimate your ass. Let your throat. <laughs> did your dad listen to that episode, though? I don't think he did. Wow. Isn't that... Maybe dis- he did. I don't know. Did you listen to it sober? I never listened back to anything I've ever done. Well, that should have done that good. one. <laughs> that's good. That's huh? You should have listened to that one. Why? Because then you would know why everyone's upset with you. Ah, what, what do you think you did wrong, William? Just to give people the cliff's notes here. I threw up on one of Red Band's microphones. Oh. I kicked over one of his tripods. I messed up one of his cameras. What did you do to Eric Griffin? I kissed Janice. I know. Well, that's you kissed Janice? Yep. Yeah. We made out in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You didn't know that one, did you, Red Band? I did because <laughs> she was screaming because you were forced on top of her. Oh. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> okay. This is getting creepy. I wouldn't say that. William, where do you write most of these jokes at? Where where do you find yourself? In a bathtub? Are you driving somewhere? Are you at the storage facility? Where do you tend to do most of your writing? It's mainly in a backyard setting. Backyard setting. So you're sitting at a patio? Correct. Do sitting you normally, at a metal table. Do you normally write while drinking alcohol? Because that could be an interesting sometimes storyline. By sometimes, you I mean, mean... You've heard his jokes, right? Yeah. You mean Come a on, lot? Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you gave him the frowny face. <laughs> uh oh, we know what that sound means. All right, William. We'll That's how you write in the back with Beck playing. I do love some Beck. I actually got word this week that Beck's a big fan of you. Did you? He actually emailed me. Yeah. So that's cool that you heard as well. I can't. What did he it. tell you in the email? He told me to come to the Church of Scientology. Um, I told him I'm a big Christian. Uh, if God were to appear in front of you right now and say, William, follow my way. You've been drinking too much. Ooh, it's me, Jesus. What would you do? Uh, That's a weird sounding Jesus. (laughs) Spooky ghost. I would uh, just realize that he actually was the stranger on the bus. Do you remember that song? What if God was one of us? Alanis Morissette. Trying to be, no, no, that was Cheryl like Joan Crow. Osborne. Oh, what? Joan Osborne. Yeah, <laughs> Cheryl Crow. Her, Rest in peace. I can't song. believe she's dead. Oh yeah, Macy Gray. That's yeah, a great song. <laughs> <laughs> Her career is dead if she's not. So. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Bill and Ted, Dale Earnhardt, George Floyd. You covered all the bases here tonight, William. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna tell you that's kill Tony Bingo automatic. I tried. So, uh, girlfriend situation's good? Yeah, it's going good. Can we check for bruises? Can you pull up your shirt and turn it's around, actually, please? actually... No, we're not doing that. Can we see what the... Uh, what I'm the, not pulling up my shirt. Can we see how the hole on your stomach's doing? I'm not pulling up my shirt. Oh, the infection's back, huh? Oh, I think he's got more bruises. I'm not pulling my shirt up. It's actually her birthday on 9-11. He's got a worse staff than someone that uh, doesn't use ZipRecruiter. Staff. Yeah, it's the infection that you have. Staff infection. That staff infection is the open wound. I had a staff what is this, infection. The Ellen show on your chest, and the staff oh my God. reference. Oh, there we go. Look at those legs. Damn. You Wait, got... it's right here. I had a staff infection. Wow. I gotta say, from the waist down, you look amazing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I used to be a cyclist. I was a state champion cyclist. That's right. He actually was. That's a junior a- Olympic uh, champion. Now he's got that e-bike body. Lot I wouldn't of, say that. A lot of his, pe- his body is breaking away. <laughs> 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 it's a great bike movie. Yes, it is. He went from the Tour de France to the Tour of Italy. 
<laughs> what is that? A uh, what is that restaurant called? Olive Garden. Uh, even Jack Olive Ripper Garden. Yeah, that's Olive a good Garden. Olive Garden joke. Yeah, we get the red six, eh? Huh? Yeah, we get the red six at Olive Garden. Here it is. Yeah, we get the red six. It is. There he goes, William Montgomery, everybody. Another Woo! fun week with William Montgomery. Switching of the microphone. I've pulled a piece of paper. Do you off. believe him that he didn't drink since Saturday? Um, sort of. I sort of believe I him. Sort I think of he may too. have snuck. I think he may have had like one beer to help him fall asleep last night or something weird. Right. That's the vibe I'm getting. I, I know him very well. He's laughing very hard at that too. Like I may have just nailed it. Hmm. Did you have a little beer before sleep last night? Liar. Little, <laughs> little vodka and Coca-Cola? He knows that his dad <laughs> listens to this podcast. He knows Papa's listening. <laughs> so look at him laughing. That means he's fucking caught red-handed. <laughs> <laughs> look at him holding the hole in his chest, <laughs> keeping oh. his intestines from <laughs> plopping out. Your first comedian being pulled out of the bucket with a fresh, clean microphone goes by the name of Sean Karen, everyone. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun a step back from that ledge. My friend. Here he is, Sean Karen, everybody. I miss life before COVID. I really miss my job. Uh, I used to work at the retard center. Yeah, that's that's what I said on my paycheck. That's old school. But uh, I learned a lot from, from my clients. I'm no like philosopher, but I learned a lot about like love. I think that there's different levels, you know, to love. I think the top level is like a mother's love. But like right under that is disabled love. That's a, that's like that raw love. That's a like built for tough love. You know what I mean? A uh, couple of days before COVID hit, I walked into two of my clients. They were making out. And I was like, dude, just don't make out over here. Wait until you're at the mall. Wait until you're at your, you know, at your girl's house. And he, he locked eyes with me. He was like, I kiss her in her mouth. I like it. She likes it. But you don't like it. You don't like it. I'm like, damn, now that you say it like that, you want the lights on or off? (laughs) All right, that's my time. All right, Sean Karen. So let me understand this story a little bit better. Two mentally challenged people yeah. are making out. Uh, Down syndrome. Down syndrome. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> uh, well, two negatives do make a positive. <laughs> my, my goodness gracious! And and you worked at the center in which a lot of these people were held. Yeah, I, I was I, I was like the the staff, but I was like the middleman. I was like the diplomat between disabled and, reg- and right. And I could see why that would be. You <laughs> seem like you're you seem like you're somewhere right in between those two worlds. Yeah. You with the uh, size of sweatpants, one size too large, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Thing with sweatpants is you can see where a man's dick is. You see where his dick is right there, everybody? Look directly at it, Red Band. You see that? I see it. It's very clear. We can see your penis. Uh, yeah. The thing about sweatpants is they seem like the kind of pants that would hide your dick, but they're the worst at it. I mean, what's your name with sweatpants? I'm just glad he's not wearing William shorts. <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the interesting thing is, is since I mentioned being able to see his dick, it's gotten slightly firmer. It's, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it moved a little. Yeah, that's yeah, what happens. Excited. If you call out someone's dick, they get excited. The blood goes there. It's a natural. Uh, we tendency. should see if we can get it fully hard. Yeah, that's absolutely. Absolutely. what we talk about. What, what type of what, t- what type of uh, <laughs> curls are you into? He's now just oh, sweating. Oh, oh, he's oh, he's oh, gotten oh, completely oh, wet <laughs> since I started talking about this. What kind of women are you into? It depends, really. Big breasts with a big ass and no, they no, no, squirt like all over you. Come on, nipples. let's get that I, I dick like, hard. Like, uh, She's squeezing the tits right now <laughs> looking at you. This is the first you. time we've tried to get someone to have an erection <laughs> in the it's history working, of the working. show. It's been I, seven it's and a half years and we're grasping at straws. I find that hard to believe, to be honest with you. Well, that's not the only thing that's getting hard to believe in this room. 
because that thing is pointing to the east. <laughs> Which way to Vine Street, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to get Manifest Destiny. <laughs> Go all the way across. Oh, my God. It literally is really getting is. harder. Can it's you like zoom in? Okay. Zach, get over there and I'm zoom in on this. It's 50% harder right now. Okay. Zoom in. I'm Lift up your jacket it's a little working. bit. We're going to it's completely expose you right now. Zoom, it's zoom in on his dick, Zach. It's Zach, it's working. Whoa. Keep, keep going. <laughs> keep going. We are making history today. Welcome to another episode of Kill Boney. <laughs> <laughs> this episode brought to you by DickRecruiter.com. <laughs> <laughs> my God, we got to get you a pair of sheets, my friend. <laughs> yeah. You got to bury that thing under a couple more layers. My God, what are you, what are you free balling under yeah. those sweatpants? It's hot. You got it. Yeah. Oh, my God. That thing's raised up like a fucking thermometer in Van Nuys. <laughs> 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 that thing, that thing's higher than fucking uh, William yeah, Montgomery yeah, on a Saturday night. Yeah, I could just put porn on while we interview him, so he could look oh, at it. Oh, that's a great idea. What e What's your favorite ethnicity of uh, porn star? Hmm. Probably, I'll say something I can relate to. Mixed. I like mixed. Okay, let's find alive a good or dead. <laughs> 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 what is that? That's a cam. That's a cam girl. We are now pointing oh, uh, a black, uh, a, 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 what appears to be a slightly, I would say, um, I wouldn't call this light skinned. I would call it, uh, I would call it. Uh, she, no, she, 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 she pretty light. She's, she's a mix. We might need to find someone mentally challenged for him to really get off. Oh, her. yeah. <laughs> We're going to go into the mentally challenged part. She's an interesting shade of uh, an interesting shade of black. You'd have to buy the uh, like 175 Crayola box to find the exact color that that girl is. <laughs> Burnt so. Sienna. Yes. That's actually her name, Sienna. Uh, so how do you feel right now being the first ever uh, person on Kill Tony to go through the uh, Kill Boney? You know, I'm going. You know what? It's gonna keep. It's gonna keep on getting better. Now that you should. Yeah, there we go. That's good. You're definitely That's gonna good. be famous from this. <laughs> Do you feel at all uh, like you're being a me too or anything like that <laughs> yeah. right now? Uh, no, this is this is great. This, this is, is fun, right? This is, this is you're part of a comedy show. Oh yeah. Need you to do not. Some you do not yeah. uh, accuse uh, Death Squad, Golden Pony Productions, oh, no. or the Comedy Store LLC. <laughs> No, uh, this is at all for anything that's happening to you no, right now. This you're is, having uh, fun. This Charles is Manson night. approves of everything you're saying to this guy right now, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Where's the weirdest place you've ever gotten a boner? Other than right now, right oh, here. Oh, man. The weirdest place, I'd say... Oh, no, probably... In my the pants. The mall, probably. The mall? Yeah. What mall? The mall. Roosevelt Field. I used to work there. Wow. What did In you New do York. there? I used to work there. I used to be the stock. Like I used to work in the back. I used to tell people I was a model for Hollister, but I, they really. I just worked at the back of it. Wow. Well, it looks like you have a Wetzel's pretzel <laughs> in your pants right now. You know what I'm saying, people? <laughs> Everybody. Donors, you can't work in the front like that. You know. Heck yeah. You're, there's no way you're working in guest services with fucking <laughs> sweatpants and that goddamn fucking uh, that fucking uh, little smoky you got there. <laughs> You have uh, you have sex with a lot of girls. You sexually active? No, not for a while. Really? Not since I not since I was nineteen. Oh my goodness! How old are you now? Thirty one. Wow! Oh, yeah. You haven't had sex since you were nineteen. Yeah. It's Purpose, been, purposely. It's though. been twelve. No, no wonder yeah. you have a fucking boner during <laughs> Kill Tony. My God, you have twelve years of semen uh, wrapped <laughs> up in your nuts right now. <laughs> my God. This is incredible. What do you think is going to happen the first time you have sex with a girl after 12 years of not having sex with a girl? You think I'm a, I'm a, it's going it's going to I'm going to go in really. I'm just going to go I in. I don't real think hard. you're going to make it. And I think fast. you're going to You're going <laughs> to come taking off your underwear, Sean. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Why do you think you haven't had sex with a girl in 12 years? Yeah, I think I'm wait I think I'm waiting for it to be more serious cuz yeah. Really? Yeah. Are really? You, are you celibate by other people's <laughs> Let me <see>. choices? <laughs> what is he seeing over here? Eileen sells a Oh, my <laughs> goodness oh, gracious. <laughs> Red Band, that's got a penis. <laughs> oh, oh. Red Band, that girl's got a wiener. I'm seeing if I could get there faster. There's <laughs> innocent females back there. This is, we're going we're gonna to be, we're going to have a vulture article written about us if we keep pointing this iPad back there. Yeah, I'll suck him off for $5 if I can kill him after. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> We got a what, deal? A, what about Eileen Wernos over here? What do you think about this beautiful girl? Hey, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about me, babe? Yeah, would you hook up with a girl that looked like that? Yeah. I, I got to see how I got to see how she plays the trumpet at first. Oh, no. Jesus Christ, Sean. That was pretty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, have any of these Down syndrome girls at the place that you work ever hit on you? Yeah, they gave me some like uh, like like gazes. I could tell. Really? Yeah. Are, are you with, sure with that lust. they're like sexual gazes, or are they just uh, mentally no, you challenged? Could, you, you could tell. No, you could tell because because I because I, some of them are nonverbal, so I see what they do to other uh, you know a girl and a girl and a guy how the girl like. Cause they're not they they don't know how to speak right. so they'll, they'll they're they're sharp they know how to give like a sight like they'll bite their lip to other other dudes these are right. girls with down syndrome yeah and they'll rub right. they'll rub they'll start rubbing and i gotta i had to break it up like I they don't go know. i don't know they that's, go they get in heat sort of wild they're down to fuck <laughs> <laughs> i've made that joke on this show before i'm not proud of that, it but i had actually, to do it that's actually we've been counting that's actually the 10th time you've made that joke <laughs> Call back. I like how Sean rationalizes that he's getting hit on by uh, Down syndrome <laughs> girls. He's like, yeah, you could tell they like you when they swallow their tongue. Okay, okay, Brian. No one knows what's going on there. So It's now oh. dog humping. Okay. Oh <laughs> dogs humping. It seems, so, it seems as if though it is increasing his uh, erection. He's got an upcoming erection. Okay, Red Band. Uh, Sean, so... Uh, 12 years, no sex, and you work uh, with special needs people. Yeah. What do you like to do for fun? Any hobbies or anything? Right like now, that? I'm tr- I'm, I, tr- I start training for like for running now. You're so so I've been do- I'm training now for a 5K, 10K, and, and higher. So I've been running like hard. So I have been re- wearing short shorts actually for the run. For oh my I run. goodness! So, yeah. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe so much <laughs> blood is uh, flowing <laughs> to his fucking uh, Dick Tracy. Well, it's definitely not going to his head. I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> so you're training for a 10k oh uh, yeah man yeah. it's 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 because of covid things are shut down but i'm still trying to build up my stamina it's, that's not an excuse i'm still putting in work so hell yeah Absolutely, i'll be ready to go dude. what else what else do you do for fun um that's pretty much it. i've been doing that comedy all the time i'm you know uh, i got a podcast up i've been focusing on that and i've just been writing a lot too so i've yeah. just been been doing that uh, and I'm, I'm looking for, for a job, but I, I don't want to do, uh, it's kind of hard looking for a job because I don't want like a full-time job where I get comfortable. I don't want to do that. I had, you know, so I want to find like a, still like a part-time job. Right. So I'm hey, that m- makes sense, man. Well, uh, you know what? Maybe one of the listeners to this show, uh, are, uh, looking for someone for their uh, company, someone that gets boners easily while wearing sweatpants. <laughs> That's on a lot of people's uh, hiring list. <laughs> and I mean, Red Man, who's going to get hard watching this? It's a dog with a dodgeball stuck a on its head. rock back here, baby. Oh, shit. That dog's about Keep to it fuck going. it. Are you, are you into dogs with dodgeballs stuck on their head? Yeah, heads? it's like a bondage uh, no, thing. No, no. Oh, here's some chickens <laughs> fucking if you need some chickens. All right. That guy's already got enough cock <laughs> fighting going on in his Rabbit pants. Fucking. Okay, okay. Uh, Sean, you are one of the first people to have a semi boner in the history of Kill Tony. We appreciate you coming on. Fun set, man. You talked about pre COVID. There right, you go. Thanks, Sean Robin. Karen, everybody. What do you want me to say? Sometimes we talk about the people set. Sometimes we find out something wild about their lives. And sometimes we try to get them to get a boner. <laughs> Oh wow! This is the uh, this is the return of someone very interesting that we met a few weeks ago. He made a long drive from the middle of uh, oh. middle of the upper northern uh, cornfields, the top of the GTA map, to be here. He's back again. Here he is, Trey Peacock. Everybody. What's up? So I wrote a poem for you guys tonight from the bottom of my heart. It goes like this. I grow hair out my dick, but please don't laugh, because it's hard to shave a shriveled shaft. And I don't really fuck with that hot wax, so my peacock I jack to tits and ass is fat. To get me hard to manscape my lap, but still no cheeks around to clap. Porn is addictive, just like some crack, any category or fetish, there is no lack. Fart sniffing junkie, nose deep in butt crack, just stay off Pornhub and hit the streets for cat. I call that poem butt crackhead. You know, you could get your face wet from face wet and your pit sweat from pit sweat, but right now I'm kind of nervous, so my butt sweat from butt sweat. And uh, with all these face masks and face sweat, I've been thinking of shaving my mustache off, but I got to keep the beard around, otherwise everyone will know I'm gay. That's it. Yeah, 
Killing me softly with his poem. <laughs> me softly with his poem. There you go. There you go. That's enough. That's enough right there. Trey Peacock, how are you? Good, man. How what you? made you write a uh, poem tonight? I wrote that on the drive back last or a month ago or whatever. Right. I wrote that on the way. And I was like, I don't know if this will work or not. But when how, do you, find how out, do you feel like it went? I don't know. I if don't he know. was a rapper, his name would be Bad Logic. <laughs> I'm I feel like I remembered it all right. <laughs> I love it. You remind me of like the smartest guy in Bakersfield. Am I right? <laughs> what close? I he looks like Jeremiah if he had a meth problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. This is if Jeremiah wasn't a Christian. This is what would have happened. <laughs> sure. he, look, he looks like if Dennis the Menace killed Mr. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's absolutely true. Uh, is there an update from your car accident that you had last time that you were on the show? We all just dipped. Nothing happened yet. I don't think nothing's going to come of it. You ever do drugs? Yes. <laughs> what kind of drugs do you do? I mean, weed mostly. I smoke cigarettes, so that's shitty, but acid, that's my main thing. Acid. <laughs> Have you ever done a Kratom before? Nah. Nope. Uh, well, it, that, I mean, I should probably tell you, there is uh, SK Kratom. It's out there. Now, if you're over the age of 18 and not familiar with Kratom, you should listen up because Kratom is natural. It's the leaf of a topical, tropical evergreen tree mainly found on the island of Borneo. Do you know that? I didn't. I'll have to I try bet it. you didn't. I bet there's a lot you don't know. For hundreds of years, it was used by the people of Indonesia, workers in the rice fields. They would chew the leaves to help with energy and stamina through the day, similarly to how Americans drink coffee or energy drinks. Most Kratom consumers use Kratom as an alternative to dangerous and addictive pharmaceuticals. Kratom has scientifically been proven to be safe. Yeah, man. SK Kratom is the best in the business. They have been a top Kratom supplier for over six years and traveled to even Indonesia numerous times to see how and where they're supplied suppliers operate so they were able to weed out the bad product and suppliers sk put in the effort so you are getting the best possible product sk operates as a legitimate herbal supplement business with rigorous standards to ensure the customer has the highest quality and the safest product including testing by a third-party fda consultants to prove the quality of sk Crate. it's really true so you could if you wanted to you can go right now to soapcorner.com that's s-o-a-p-k-o-r-n-e-r.com and use the promo code kill tony 30 for 30 percent off your first order of 35 dollars or more that's soapcorner.com Use the code KILLTONY30 for 30% off. SoapCorner.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This product is not for use by, for sale to persons under the age of 18. This product should not be used. It should only be used directly as directed on the label. It should not be used if you're pregnant or nursing. Consult with a physician before use if you have serious medical condition or use prescription medications. The doctor's advice should be sought before using this in any supplemental dietary product. Nailed it. Wow. That is incredible. What other drugs have you used? That's it. Just weed, acid. Really? That's you ever use CBD? Uh yeah, I did actually. Yeah. And it, did it work out well for you? I could, I mean, I didn't really feel nothing. Did you uh what did you use it for? Just to try it. I mean, the it CBD rank. that you used was it by any chance Infinite CBD? Infinite it CBD. definitely was not. That's why I should tell you that right now Infinite CBD is the best. They actually work. A lot of the places are con artists, but Infinite CBD has the cleanest, purest CBD available. If you've never heard of CBD, it's derived from hemp plants and packs all the benefits of marijuana without getting high. And Infinite CBD has a ton of different products that we've used, and they're great, right, Brian? Oh, I love them. I love the CBD gummies, you can tell. With B12, you have to pick these up and as a part of your morning routine. The B12 gummies have the benefits of 25 milligrams of CBD combined with 1,000 micrograms of B12. 12 per gummy this is energizing like like i love it. it it makes me start my morning off with a pow if you haven't tried cbd look it up there's a lot of research and users reporting benefits like reduce anxiety reduce inflammation and more so you can go to infinitecbd.com to see which of their products fits your needs that's infinitecbd.com and if you use the promo code kill tony you will get 20 percent off once more that's infinitecbd.com and promo code kill tony for 20 percent off have you ever thought about that huh I have. Oh. I'll think deeper next time. There you go. Well, yep. now you know exactly what to do. Cool. Uh, do what? you ever do cocaine? Nope. It's funny you should mention that because right now, <laughs> cocaine.com <laughs> has a very special deal. Uh, so uh, what have you been doing it's, lately it's to the pass the time? the same cocaine you wash your teeth with. Where exactly in California <laughs> do you live? Turlock. It's Turlock. right by Modesto. Turlock. That's right. And it's uh, north of Modesto or south of Modesto? It's south of Modesto. So that's Timbuktu, people. That is a scary desert, uh, barren wasteland up there. Um, do, you, do you live in a house? Yeah, I do. 
Is it uh, one story? Two story. Whoa, two story. I live with my pops. You have stairs or a ladder? Stairs. <laughs> oh my goodness! I can't believe you have stairs. They welded the house, the the floors together, right? I yep. picture he just lives on top of two books. <laughs> I'm just Two thinking stories, about one of those right like, whack shacks you see on the side of the highway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, what do your parents do for work? Welders, right? Yeah, well, my dad's a welder. My mom works at a church. What does yeah. she do at the church exactly? Uh, she helps run the youth program. Oh, I bet yeah. she does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you tell her to pray harder for you, please? <laughs> she tries. She tries so hard. <laughs> I don't know. My goodness. So, Trey, it's been the temperatures have been scorching lately. I can't oh, yeah. imagine what it's like just south of Modesto. What have you been doing to stay cool? Nothing to stay cool. I've just been working a lot. Drinking yeah. a lot of Surge? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> What have you been doing? Uh, well, oh, uh, I got a story from when I was working the other day. I was working in a hospital in Modesto. What were you doing in a hospital? I was doing electrical work, like pulling wire and stuff. Shit. Yeah, we were putting a, a sensor into a big salt tank, cleans out water or whatever. I didn't realize. Wait, I was... were you building a meth lab? No. He's no. Scrapping. <laughs> it sounds Worse, like it was. A meth a, it was. Lab. A, I was working in the morgue, and I didn't even know it, but I, there was a part there. It was the, a morgue. A, like, yeah, like the or not a morgue. Where the dead bodies are. Yeah, the dead bodies are. Can you review so how you didn't know you were working in a morgue? Oh, what? What? <laughs> how did you not know you were working in a morgue? Well, because nobody told me. My just my coworker said, "Hey, I need your help." I headed out there. Nobody told me, but I found hey, out. Hey, could you get something for me out of the frozen aisle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found out because I saw a guy. He pulled up with a van and like got out a stretcher at Gurney and was like putting blankets and pillows on it and everything. I was like, "All right, they're gonna wheel someone out." And then they brought out somebody in a body bag. I was like, what the fuck? Okay. And then I'm like, well, why do you take all the time to put the pillow and blanket in? The he was in a body bag. They just set him on there. So Did you ask but, them why they put a pillow down? I didn't. I was just getting the fuck away from that. That's because like, they, they wanted the person to rest in peace. I guess. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so what did you end up? Uh, is that it? That's the morgue story? That's the morgue story. I like it. I saw it. I like it. <laughs> Uh, what's your love life like? What did we find out about this little peacock? Uh, <laughs> I just got dumped a few months ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. How'd yep. that go down? Why'd she dump you? Uh, she Started just... fucking your brother? Nope. Nah. <laughs> she just said she couldn't see herself marrying me, which I'm like, what the fuck? Like that? She was the one telling me the whole time. She's like, oh, we're going to get married. And then I started to get serious, and she's like, nope, cut me off. So, How old are you? 21. Oh, my God. <laughs> How old is she? You dodged a bullet. 17. 19. Oh, my yeah, but God. That's like, that's like 47 in Modesto years. Yeah, in yep. Mid <laughs> that's, that's Modesto for you. Yes, I know you're 21 and I'm 19, but I can't see myself marrying you, Trey. <laughs> yep. And Something I'm getting like rid of the baby, too. <laughs> I've no, been we seeing pregnant. someone and it ain't a dentist. Yep, something like that. <laughs> My goodness gracious. Do you think she's already hooking up with somebody else? Did it oh, I know she is. Did, she it break, did it break your heart? Uh, a little bit, but I was like, nah, fuck that bitch. How many Newports <laughs> did you smoke that night? Probably like three packs. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I stopped smoking cigarettes though. <laughs> oh really? Yep. Did you yep. end up stopping by going to Lucy.co and using Lucy nicotine gum? No. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, in that Shut case, up. geez. I mean, you can get a sample. Pick up the cue, Trey. Oh, yeah, a lot of people have been doing that lately, and you can absolutely do it, too. It's super d duper easy. You just go to lucy.co and use the promo code that everybody knows, including myself, and that promo code is Kill Tony. Yeah. <laughs> the smartest way to hire. Um, so, uh, what's another interesting fun fact about you that we should know before we let you Ooh, go? I forgot to tell you guys last week. I got, I'm part of the three nipple gang. I got three nips. Whoa. Yep. Shit. You got Hello. three nips. Oh, we got to get new. a zoom zoom on this. Here we go. We Zach, go Zach's zoom? going over to the camera. Whoa. Hello. Oh my God. Wait, wow. what's it, what's in, stuffed in your crotch? Um, that's my strap. Don't talk about it. Wait, uh, wait, what, what's, what, uh, lift up your shirt again. That's my strap. What is it? What is that? <laughs> it's a ratchet strap. It's a what? A ratcheting strap. Oh it's my a strap. I thought that would work. 
My bad. You had an actual strap. <laughs> yeah. <in> your... <laughs> I was wow. driving by Home Depot on the way here. I was like, I got it. <laughs> That's oh what my. I use on my slack lines. So you put a strap in your <laughs> penis area, not knowing that the guy before you was going to have a boner and assuming that we were going to ask if there's something shoved in your crotch, you were going to say, I'm strapped, pull it out like it's a gun, but it's actually just a strap? <laughs> exactly. Wow. Oh, what a bit, dude. <laughs> Incredible. Look in- out, Carrot Top. Incredible. There's a new king <laughs> in town. He was 0 for 14 throughout the beginning of, from the beginning of this <laughs> set, and then at the very end, he comes with one of the biggest surprises in the history of the show, a giant <laughs> strap in his crotch. Where'd Ladies- you buy that broken Home Depot? <laughs> yep. Oh, come I mean, on. Tony, you know. You, you can say he's strapped for cash now. You know about that? <laughs> you can bomb the whole night, but if you close strong, you won. <laughs> That's it. For the audio listeners, he pulled out like a strap that you would like tie shit onto your car or something like that, right? That's like true. one of those. That's yeah. true. He went to Lowe's to get that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of freaked me out Lowe's though when he started out. pulling it out. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> income that his family makes. Um, Trey, uh, <laughs> so fun to have you on. Thank good, you, sir. Good times, man. How many times have you done stand up now? This is my second time. Your second time ever. Congratulations, man. Go hit an open mic. Do it. Keep working it out. Go out in Modesto. Perform in front of a fucking uh, a (laughs) cigarette stand or something. (laughs) Trey Peacock, everybody. There he goes. Thank you very much. Yes, he was singing my life with his words. Uh, uh. Killing me, Tony, with his God. Killing me, Tony. All right. Your next comedian, a super regular on this show, one of my favorite human beings on the planet. Uh, great comedian, great roaster. Here he is, the great David Lucas, everyone. Here he is, live in the flesh. From the main room of the comedy store, it's David Lucas. Yeah. Uh, I think we can go ahead and open up the world if it's safe enough for 80-year-old Nancy Pelosi to go get her hair done. Uh, But the crazy thing about Nancy Pelosi getting her hair done, when she left the salon, nobody knew she got her fucking hair done. That bitch left the salon looking like a salamander. Like, what the fuck is going on? This bitch is ugly and 80 with a lot of money. Uh, A lot of people are mad. Uh, because uh, they just released that gyms have been open in government buildings during the whole quarantine. And the crazy thing is, I haven't seen one gym open in the projects. So I'm trying to figure out what government buildings had gym opens. Uh, I had a, I had my first ever threesome, but it was more like a 2.5-some. Uh, it was me, a stud, and her girlfriend. And the stud made me eat her pussy on my knees. It was the weirdest shit ever. Wait a second. What the fuck? <laughs> What's a stud? A stud is like a butch lesbian, I'm yeah. hoping? Okay. And uh, this really happened? Well, there's more, but that was supposed to be for next week. But I, I thought that those two jokes previously were going to be a minute. And then it's I'm like, damn, good. I still got time. It happens. Yeah, it I'll, happens. To be continued next week. I guess so. There's, yes. I have so many questions about it. It was. I'll tell it now. Fuck it. It was a stud and her girlfriend. Like, so uh, <laughs> this was a little while back. And, and they're both uh, They're both of the African-American descent? Yeah, they both niggas. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, That's uh, what I wanted to ask. I saw this girl at a club, and I was trying to get at her. And she was like, you can have me, but you got to have my girlfriend, too. So I'm like, oh, cool. shit!" That ain't and then the she thing. walks up looking like you. The bitch look like me without oh. the beard. Oh, my goodness <laughs> gracious. Oh, wow. I'm you talking, instantly fell in love. Tatted up, belly, pants sagging. We wore the same size shoes and everything. My goodness. <laughs> she had the same bangs, too? Uh, her dress were a little longer. Well, my dress were real short at the time. I think I had just started actually growing my locks. Huh. So it was, uh, yeah, her shit was killing mine. And yeah, the, she like she made me feel like the bitch in the room. She made right. me literally get on my knees, eat her pussy, and she like hovered over you. Yeah, and sort of just like dipped her pussy in your face. Yeah, bro, like slapped me across my face with her clit. She had a big <laughs> clit a, though. She oh like deep throat that pussy now. She had a big <laughs> like she had a big clit. Like her 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 thing was she was like she puts her clit inside of girls. Oh fuck! Wait a minute. This is this is a stud with a big clit. Are you sure this wasn't a dick? No, nah, <laughs> it was a clit. It was a clit. My goodness gracious. 
So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, she started shoving the clit in the vagina and the balls started hitting up against <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's crazy. So did you end up having sex with her and her girlfriend? Nah, I couldn't do it, bro. You couldn't do it? You tapped out on the yeah. pussy it, eating part? It was part? too much, bro, because it was like, bitch. You're a pescatarian. Was that the fishiest thing you've ever had in your mouth? <laughs> nah, it's... Did it's, it taste like Lunchable, mate? There's some hoes out here you really can't go down on because you as soon as you take their underwears off, you like Fuck. Had you been drinking? Uh yeah, I was I was lit. I was yeah. lit and turned it down. Yeah. But you were lit and you turned it down, but you didn't turn it down until you were already on your knees. <laughs> I was on your fucking knees. You had already paid your dues. You, yeah. you, you had nothing but the, the yeah. whole stretch ahead of you. It, it was the disrespect. Just be honest. Out. All you wanted to do was eat the, 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 the masculine <laughs> lesbian's pussy. Nah, did she bro. put her hand on the back of your head when you were going down on it? No, I, I did watch them fuck, though. Oh, okay. And the, the shit, I'm glad I didn't fuck her because she pulled out a strap on like two times the size of my dick. Oh, shit. And I'm like, I would have been, in, there's nothing I could have did to this girl if you fuck her with but, that on the But didn't that get you like crazy horny and be like, fuck, I'm joining this party? Like, how could I, you not do I probably, that? I probably dodged a bullet because uh, I already had like tequila dick. I wouldn't Was the it. lesbian like, I'm going to pull out a strap on and she pulled out an actual strap? No, the bitch had a fuck. <laughs> Oh, that. Hey, bro, that nigga almost had me going to the car. Me too. I, I, I kind of <laughs> freaked like, out. I David, I have a question. Is it a, is it a turn on? Do you have to be dominant, or like, can you be, take the submissive role? I'm a dominant nigga. Yeah. Like, if a girl chooses to fuck me, it ain't gonna work. Right. Yeah. I'm the dominant nigga. When you, when you say chooses to fuck you, do you mean like in fuck your fuck back? He's right. a power top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't wait. So so if a girl's on top, what are, what are you saying? I got to be in control of her. Like she can't do. I ain't gonna let you her say, do her own. You don't let her like bounce up and down. But I gotta tell her at the speed. Bro, you're in. Come, you know comedy. You gotta let her grind, man. Nah. So wait. So when you say you have to, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold that thought. Yeah, yeah. So when you say you have to regulate the speed, you mean like you hold on to their waist and yeah. sort of just control it yeah. that way. Because I don't, I don't you're wanna... not like faster, slower, 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 nah, faster. Exactly. Because you... I don't want a girl controlling my nut. That's too much power. Right. Yeah. I put the dom in dominoes. What? <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> what did Thank you say? You. I put the dom in domino. Oh, okay. I don't want a girl. I put the no me. in dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no chick gonna control like when I finish. It's okay. gonna be me that chooses. Right. Yeah. That's weird. So you go nice and slow then, in order to uh, be able to last long. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, what's the fastest that you've ever finished? Immediately. Right. Have you ever just put it in once? Hi, I'm David. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I probably say like yeah, I'm because <laughs> that's what everybody starts when you're a comedian. Every everyone knows you start sex like you start a set. Hi, I'm David. Uh. Like three to five minutes. Wow, three yeah. to five minutes. Yeah. Just like a pop. That was like set. that was like shit when I was like a freshman in college. Right. Yeah. That's like a good time for me. Yeah. Really? <laughs> if I go if I, can, if I make it five whole minutes, I'm doing good. Yeah, five yeah. minutes. Five minutes can be uh depending on uh the uh, uh, the motion in the ocean could be a good fuck session. Depending on the girl too, like I've 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 faked a lot of orgasms. You faked I've, orgasms? Yeah. <laughs> What do you do? You just have a little Why? helmet, mayonnaise. Back. You have a little mayonnaise packet that you keep in your pocket. Spit on their back. A little Hellman's. Just, just bite the corner off. You spit on the back and she's like, why'd you just spit on my back? They don't know, bro. <laughs> they don't hear you. <laughs> you got to do, do it like you got to be and then just take it out and like drip on it. You can't like. But you can't that, just be a ho- did you fake an orgasm when you were eating the uh, the butch girl's vagina? <laughs> nah, that were you bitch- like, nah, I'm good, ladies. I already came from eating that <laughs> sweet, sweet pussy. She was just too aggressive. <laughs> Way too aggressive. Right. It was like, bitch, I'm the nigga. You're not. Right. Yeah. My goodness. Well, I really hope that they secretly took video of this and send it to us here at Kill Tony. I've dot girls. TV. <laughs> when I first got popular on ADD, girls tried to like, and I'm like, nah, but. Turn that shit off. Put your camera up. Put it in my bag, actually. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask a question? What did they say when you were like on your knees and you just went, nah? Like this? I was on my knees, but then like halfway through, I was like, man, I can't be out here like this. But what did they? How did they? Re- they didn't care. They, they were like, all right, then fuck. sit in that yeah. chair and watch. The the stud didn't care. I don't think the film cared either. It was just more so about. I don't know. So how did that make you feel when you were down there? How long do you think you were down there for? Drunk, drunk, like regular time, probably like 20 minutes. Drunk time, like five minutes. My goodness, oh, yeah. 25 minutes? I said on regular time, probably 20 minutes. Oh. 20, but drunk time, it was like, it felt like, you know, drunk time is a lot. 
faster than it actually is. Right. Did did it did did it like affect you? You think being down on both knees like that? You think you're gonna Absolutely, be able to perform? Absolutely, bro. It, 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 it took a little bit of my manhood. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the classic from Boys to Men. Down I'm on down bending, on knee. bending <laughs> knees. Was this playing in the background? No nope. trap music, nigga. I was in Atlanta. <laughs> My goodness. Trap music player. I had just left a strip club. Is that I, true? Yeah. Where w- was one of them a stripper? Uh, no, she was a, a security guard. It sounds like she's a paint <laughs> stripper. The <laughs> she was a sex worker. I love it, she man. She's a sex worker, bro. That's great. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. Damn, David Lucas. I fuck with per- people for their person. I mean, but you know, like I don't, I don't care about all that shit, bro. You I, know how to have fun, man. I've dated a stripper. I've dated a porn star. Like that shit don't bother me. It's all about your personality. God damn right, yeah. you're a fucking rock star. Yeah, bro. you know it, bro. I Jiminy <laughs> crickets. Can you believe this guy? <laughs> I 100 percent believe this. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, David. Well, fun times, Bye, fun nigga. story. Yeah. We'll see you next week. There yeah, he goes, yeah, the yeah, great yeah. David <laughs> Lucas. Everybody. We're gonna get ya. We're gonna get ya, get ya, get ya, get ya one way or another. All right. This should be fun. I've seen this young man lingering around the show for the last few weeks. He has signed up. This is his time. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes James Walters. Here we go. Yeah. There he is, James Walters. Thank you very much, Tony, and the contraband. All right, so anyway, I was on a forced vacation for the last couple of years, got myself in a little bit of trouble. And on the one out, I started to notice that was oh, I started to notice that there was different stuff going on. There was all kinds of movements. And I saw a movement for BLM. And I started getting pissed off. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Who's out here killing motherfucking Smurfs, man? I was out there for like three goddamn weeks looking for Gargamel. I was ready to fuck somebody up for getting Smurf fed. Anyway. So all kinds of other shit was changing around, and I started to notice that they're changing the names of jobs that people have. Like, you're no longer a waiter, you're now a server. And to me, that's absolutely ridiculous. You wait for me to come in, you wait for me to leave. And then the stewardess shit is just pissing me off, too. Like, you're a flight attendant. Bitch, you steward me onto the plane, you steward me off the plane, we're all attending them on the fucking flight. And so the whole time, you know, we're just sitting there and I'm, I'm just chipping out and I'm like, I need to do something different with my life. So I decided to become a fucking rapper. And what do I do to become a rapper is I just decide that, fuck it, I need to come up with a song that's misogynistic. As- go ahead, go ahead. I want to hear the rest of this. Go ahead. All right, so I come up with a, I come up with a song and it has to be as misogynistic as hell. So I'm thinking one, two, three. Four, I drop my balls on your face, bitch. What? What? I drop my balls on your face, okay, bitch. Okay, stop, 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 <laughs> stop. James Walters, everybody. That was James Walters. That was James Walters. Hi, James. Hey, what's going on? You've been on the show once before, correct? Never. Really? This is your first time. I feel like you've been on before. No, never. As a matter of fact, when I came here two weeks ago, I had no... No offense to you or nothing. You didn't even know what was going on here. You were just walking by on a Monday. I was was driving. I had a tough day at work, and I was driving by, and I seen a crowd, and I was like, shit, there's people out here doing something. What were you driving? Oh, my little Hyundai. Where do you work at? I'm a bill collector. I work from home. You're a bill collector? Yes, sir. You're like Dog the Bounty Hunter? No, no. I used to be a process service, but then I ended up going to prison and came out. And there you so go. Fresh out of prison energies was my next uh, yeah. was my next thing that I was going to here. I right. took that note down. Yeah. Uh, what'd you go to prison for? A uh, robbery and accessory to robbery. Oh my goodness! What did you rob? A uh, Walmart and a uh, Burlington Co Factory. Oh my god! This is so <laughs> exciting. You robbed me of a minute. There you go. Uh, what did you? Uh, what did you? What did you uh, steal from the Walmart? I got to know because everything at Walmart's like uh, two dollars. What it was is it basically I was on drugs and me and my co defendant. We, uh, my wife, and uh, we were out there trying to steal shit for our habit. Uh-huh. And next thing you know, on the way out, the security guard tries to stop her and she punched the security guard in the face. What exactly did you steal? Uh, she was stealing underwear <laughs> and uh, like Bluetooth speakers and just weird oh, shit. That's that we a could codefendant relationship. You know, Tony, there's someone out there for everybody. You know, these are their soulmates. Just yeah. you a couple guys, that steals together feels together. You guys still married? Oh, yeah, for sure. What Man. was your drug of habit? 
I was a method, man. I did that. Mm. I, I was no. Wow, you loved it. How long were you doing it for? Oh, you see, that's the thing is I only did it for a couple of years. Like I, I was the regular dad with the kids and all that kind of bullshit for like 16, 17 years. How, wow, 16, 17 years. Is that how old the kids were when you started your meth habit? Yeah, man, I fucked up, man. 16 I, yeah. and 17. Are no, you s- no, no, no. They were 15, like 10, 16, and 17, yeah. 10, 15, 16, 17. Somewhere on there, yeah. High My school age. My goodness I gracious. I'm feeling good about that. Do you communicate with them now at oh, all? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, oh, everything's out. I'm everything's sober. good. Yeah, How long have you been sober for? for? Oh, shit. I've been sober from meth and all that shit for about four years. Four awesome. Years. Congratulations. Way Not go, an easy drug to give up. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people are getting off of meth by using SK Kratom. They go to... It's actually uh, true. They go to soapcorner.com, spelled with a K, and they use the promo code KILLTONY30 for 30% off. Anyway. Uh, I got off. You create them? Yeah. Really? No. Oh, I'm okay. Come on. No. That cute thing. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so incredible. What did help you get off of meth? Uh, prison. Prison did it. Yeah. Tell, us some, uh, tell us some prison stories. How long were you in prison for? I was in prison for about two and a half, three years. Ended up going to fire camp, fighting fires and all that kind of shit. So, right. Yeah. Right. My goodness. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, yeah, prison's... I don't know what kind of story you want to like. I saw someone get a hole put in them. I mean, I mean, like, what? Yeah, tell us about that. That's what we would consider a compelling story. All right. Well, I was in fire camp training, and uh, there's a bunch of factions when you're in prison. There's the Southside Gangsters, the Hispanic Gang, the the Fresno Bulldogs. There's the white people. Then there's the different black sects, and the Bulldogs and the Southside Mexicans got in a big old fight, and they started barking and fighting each other. Next thing you know. Somebody broke a broomstick off, hit another guy in the ribs with it, oh. and, and then the tear gas came and shot the dude right there, and it blew up. The helicopters came. They put people out. It was crazy. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And did the guy die? No, I don't know. I don't really care. Like, he ended up going to, like, he got, like, Who won? Out. The Mexicans or the whites? Uh, they were all Mexican. Oh, they were all Mexican. Well, no, I mean, some, like, some people... <laughs> the Mexicans won, I guess. I the mean, Mexicans it was, won, it was crazy and for me the Mexicans. I just saw Mexicans fighting Mexicans, and I just was like, "Holy shit!" My goodness yeah. gracious! What do you think about uh, all these Latinos in the prison system? Oh man, you don't want to get me started about all that stuff. I mean, that's that's the prison system. I'm not going to talk about those. Dude. Right. And what are you? You fell into the group of the whites, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you seem like you could sort of play the fence on either side. Oh, I'm, I mean, yeah. I mean, prison is weird. Like, it's a forced kind of racism when you go in there. Uh-huh. Like, you immediately have to. Did you ever have to do choose. something for the white people to earn your stripes or anything? Were oh, they yeah. ever like, "Hey, man, go up to the Mexican and fucking call him a Mexican"? Yeah. Did the white people talk like Mexicans in prison? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, like some of them did. Like, it's it's weird. Like, you'll go in there and and you'll see like white dudes that are from like Torrance. You know what I'm saying? And as soon as they get into county jail, the Mexicans will rush them and be like. And then they're just like, okay, yeah, whatever. And next thing you know, they're Mexican and they're getting hang out. No, yo, yo no soy blanco, señor. No, 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 no you really do? Yeah, like I'm telling you, like my my shit, like I broke okay. Give us a real rap song okay, that's like that's a little more complex than I put my balls on your face. Okay, see, because there we go. I'm, the rap name's broke for real. Okay. okay, all right. Like I ain't into pipping into female acquisitions. I got fast lane sluts that play any and all positions. If you don't do shit, you still make a decision. So handle all the bullshit with some timing and precision. Catch me a genie to grant me three wishes. Suck a dick, cook a steak, and go and do my dishes. Bad bitches, bad bitches, bad bitches. They be the ones that go and do the snitching. Bad bitches, bad bitches, bad bitches. They be the ones that go and get my riches, but fuck them. I'm broke, I give them all flow. I got weed, liquor, money, and all these hoes. They're telling, oh, we, yo, I got weed, liquor, money, and hoes. Wow. Damn. <laughs> my goodness. Fuck yeah. Wow, I didn't know fucking Oompa Loompas could rap like that. That's incredible. <laughs> I, I didn't know we were listening to New Kids on the Cell Block. You know what I'm talking about? Hey! <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to rap. Like, I, I didn't know what contraband was. I saw Alice Cooper and then, you know, you know Gallagher pills and cash. You know what I'm saying? I had no idea what 100%. What do your kids do now? How old are they now? My, about? Kids, are, my kids are doing well. I have, I have a son. That was going to be my other joke. Like, when I came out, like, I didn't know. Like, I, I never done this shit before. So you were like, do a minute. And I was like, oh, all right, jokes. You know, I was going to talk this about This is your first time ever trying yeah. stand up? Like, I did it like 20 years ago. Like, I went for a talent show. Right. Like, 20 years ago, and I did okay. And I ended up hosting for like a week. 
Wow. It was, it was dumb as shit because I did the dumb rap song. Yeah. But I actually like hosted for that dude, Ari Shafir. Like, you like, hosted shit. for him? Yeah, like back in 2000, I think in two, like when he was first wow. starting. Wow, that's so cool. What did you host for him? Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I came up, did a couple of dumb jokes for the week. Right, it said, was hey. like an open mic. He yeah. was hosting. No, no, no. I was no, I was hosting. He came to San. I lived in Santa Barbara at the time. Called this place okay. called the Coach House. Yeah, I went for an open. It was called open mic, but I thought it was open mic for like comedy. It was open mic for like everybody. There was right. like chicks up there singing about getting raped and sure, like, you know, all cancer poems. It was crazy. Yeah. People getting boners. Yeah, like, yeah, be- <laughs> right. It was. It was. A, it was a carnival. But I did jokes, and then the guy came in and was like, oh, did you do that nice? You know, you want to come back next Tuesday? And I was like, sure. I had no idea what the hell I was getting into. And so him and some other dude that came up with him, they came up just to do the show. They got paid. I got, yeah. like, part of the tips. Wow, you know that's great. So, yeah. Look at but that. Then, and then, then you hung up. You hung it up. Well, I mean. I, You're like, fuck this. I'm going to go no, do but math. I wasn't, well, no, I wasn't doing drugs at the time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I just had kids, and I like, I needed a real job and pay right. real bills and right. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, right now, the kids are older, and I'm like, fuck it. You know, like, this, I came down here. You're like, come back next week. I'm surprised Ari Shafir let you leave with any money that day. That's Damn. very oh, impressive. Oh, no, see, I'm like, oh, those tips, uh, those tips should also come to me. No, he did ask. Right. I need to buy a new Medora. <laughs> That's fun. Well, James, congratulations on your 20-year return to stand-up comedy. Fun times here. We talked about... What did you mean by the Smurfs thing, by the way, for the Black okay, Lives Matter? Like, no, I didn't say black. I said Blue Lives Matter. So oh. Like, oh okay. You know, so I'm saying like when Blue Lives Matter, I was like, who's out there killing the fucking Smurfs? Gotcha. Like, I didn't gotcha, gotcha. I thought that was going to kill. Blue Lives Matter. I heard you say BLM. And Welcome I, to comedy, James. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was going to kill. It's our favorite thing kill. to say. Right. There he goes. James Walters. Fun times, Thanks, James. Guys. Thank you very much. There he goes. Come back again, James. All right. Let's see what happens here. Okay. This should be fun. Uh, met this young lady right before the show, and she signed up. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Christy Belich. Here we go. Here she is. The one, the only Christy Belich. Hey, I've been, uh, I moved out to the desert, the middle of the desert, after all this went down, and unlike Jesus who got enlightened, I just got extremely fat, you know? Like, I'm going through what I call a Walmart pregnancy. Like, a Walmart pregnancy is just consists of microwave pizza, canned wine, and just clogged septic tanks. That's what it is, you know? But since I've been, like, watching a lot of YouTube lately, my YouTube ads have been weird. Like, my YouTube ad lately has been about the sleep app. And I don't know if anybody's seen this ad. It's really kind of creepy. The sleep app is something that monitors you in your sleep to the point that it monitors you when you fart and talk in your sleep. So it's got me thinking, you know, the government's got us at everything, right? And it also has me thinking that the elf on the shelf was just preparation for this bullshit, you know, during the holidays. Like, the elf on the shelf was just watching us when we were sleeping. He knows when we're awake. Uh, he kn- <laughs> Can I do the Yeah, tag? go ahead, I'm go so ahead. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, the elf on uh, the shelf. It doesn't matter if you've been bad or good, because if you're black, they're just going to shoot you in your sleep, for oh. goodness sake. Oh, my God. All right, there you go. Christy. Christy Belich, welcome to the show. How are you, Christy? I fucked up the joke. It's okay. You couldn't even tell. <laughs> um, <laughs> how long have you been doing stand up? Six years. I six years? Up joke with My six goodness. Years. Where have you been doing it six years at? Well, I was on the East Coast and I was doing the road. And Where I was on here the East Coast? The- uh, D.C. and New York and all the Virginias, all oh, the okay. no teeth states. Okay. Very good. Very good. And then uh, when did you move to California? Uh, I was here before, and then I moved on a Greyhound bus from Baltimore, Maryland to Los Angeles. Woo, Baltimore. Damn. Yeah, January More like a Blackhound bus, am I right? Baltimore, (laughs) that's a rough trip. Did you end up eating a uh, uh, Studs Pussy? No, I'm kidding. That's just a joke. It came out for no reason. If I need an OnlyFans, <laughs> maybe. I love it. Um, Christy, so welcome, welcome. You talked about a lot. You moved to the desert. What desert did you move to? I live in um, 29 Palms. Oh, my goodness. What made you move out there? I know all about 29 Palms. Poverty. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, being a comic. And I moved out for this place. I moved out for the comedy store. Right. When did you move there exactly? Um, 
April the 1st. Of 2020? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What a little gagoots. I mean, it is what it is. That's like moving to Alabama to go to Disney World. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) That is two and a half hours away, due east, for those of you that don't know. Uh, 29 Palms is the uh, young sister of a young boy named Joshua Tree. Pretty much everyone's on mushrooms and shit up there, right? Yeah, I did them, too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) A lot. (laughs) No, that makes sense. Uh, and you moved there April, and is it true you've been eating microwave pizzas? Oh, that's why I look like I'm pregnant right now. I've got two pregnant ovaries. And canned moment. wine. I thought that was hilarious. I mean, amongst people on this show, I do believe you're actually the most fit comedian we've had on. <laughs> it's a lie. That's why I wore black. All day. You have the highest rated physical that's really out of everybody. Sad. William has open wounds. David, I didn't even get to talk to David Lucas about him uh, jumping in a pool. Did you see that video of him jumping in a pool? Oh, yeah. Well, who jumps in the pool with their shoes on? Shoes and socks. And the somehow f- there was barely any splash. I've never seen anything like it <laughs> I was going to say, was there any water left in it? No, no, it was the opposite. Somehow he left like no splash whatsoever. I think it was he had, Olympic he level had practiced diver. already jumping over the jetty and the little boy reaching up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what do you think would happen if you jumped into a pool, Christy? Um, I'd probably look like David Lucas, but the opposite, I feel. Was it David Lucas and William in the same pool? I don't know. I mean, what do you do for, how do you stay cool out there in 29 Palms? It's very hot out there. I pray and I do mushrooms. Really? Who do you pray to? Uh, I pray to Jesus and Kali. My goodness. Uh, uh, what was that second one? Kali. Kali? Yeah. Kali? Kali Ma. Kalamari, Kalima the Lepshi Day, Something Temple like of Doom, <laughs> Indiana Jones reference. Hey. Am I correct? Wow, look at that. Han, 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 han. Hey, you, you want to know what? the most uh, disturbing thing in Indiana Jones movies that I can't stop thinking about my whole life? Wow. It's when the girl is riding the elephant and she sprays perfume on that gross elephant. Oh, God. I hate, yeah, I hate that. you can't do that. That's it's animal disgusting. testing. That's bad. What's the most profound ex- revelation you've had while tripping? I think uh, for me, it's just that we all have to get through this shit no matter what. And we're, right. we're accounting for the sins of bef- the people before us. Absolutely. I agree I love 100%. That. I agree 100%. The <laughs> mushrooms are good out there in 29 Palms. <laughs> accounting for the sins. We pay the price. So uh, you do a lot of mushrooms. You in love out there? Did you find any love in 29 Palms? Any Trey Peacock-like characters coming over and uh, (laughs) doing the wiring in your place? I am unfortunately single. Really? Did you see Trey Peacock? I mean, he's very, very cute. That's the guy in the back. Yeah. Very cute. Oh, Trey, what do you think about this? She thinks you're cute. Um, I just... Strap in, buddy. I just feel like the guys here all look like they could be bottoms. I'm not going to lie. Is that how you feel about Trey? Tell the truth. I feel most of the guys, even the yeah, the guy that was in jail, all of them look like they're just slapping. Wow, bottoms. even the guy that was in jail? Damn, yeah. what kind of dude do you need? It just it just makes me sad because David Lucas is like, I'm a power top. And you're just like, dude, like, shut up. Like, pin him down. <laughs> and put, you know? Hello. I don't think there's... Now we're getting Everybody spicy. Everybody on the stage. It's so funny, except for the gorgeous lady in the back. It's just like you just—you're all little sloppy bottoms. Well, I maybe guess. you don't. Maybe you don't I need mean, a man, baby. Yeah, Eileen Wernos. Eileen Wernos can show you the way. Eileen Wernos actually uh, had some uh, pretty cute girlfriends for a while. Oh, she got excited. She thought she said Eileen DeJonos over there. <laughs> My goodness yeah. gracious. So yeah. when's the last time you were with a man? We had some people on earlier that haven't had sex in 12 years. I mean, and nobody's been under this hood in a very long time. Really? Under the yeah. hood? We got to yeah. find you a mechanic, girl. Yeah. Wait, you're a Klansman? <laughs> the most that's happened is that rats ate the wiring under my Hyundai. So I was like, oh, well, at least my car is getting oh some action. Oh, goodness. Look at that. The rats got down on their knees and ate the wiring <laughs> underneath the Hyundai. I also <laughs> own a Hyundai. So. Really? Is that true? I do. In Elantra? Yeah, it is. 2010. You better keep that thing away from William Montgomery. He flips Elantras. He's, you know that? I did not know that. That's one of the reasons why we originally fell in love with him. The first time that he was on this show, he talked about how he goes around flipping Elantras over. It's one of his favorite things to do. He turns Ooh. them over on their side. William, when's the last time you flipped an Elantra? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Buddy, I live two blocks away. We're going to my place after this. You ever flip a 2010? He's got a 2010. Where'd you park? 
Oh, I, I, I walk here. Oh, you walked here. Yeah. You're, you're very lucky. I was. Silver. What color is it? He loves silver 2009s. You're lucky you have a 2010. He would have probably already flipped it. <laughs> um, have you ever had to do anything uh, using your strength? You seem like a strong woman. Have you ever uh, saved a child from an accident or anything like that? I used to work with primates that I had to lift up and give them ketamine. What? What, what kind of primates? Oh, yeah. What do you mean? I, I worked with a couple different species of primates. That was my job. What were the species exactly? What were the primates exactly? I am a primate and I require ketamine. Rhesus macaques. <laughs> you were macaques. What were Rhesus they? Rhesus macaques. Macaques? Yeah, Rhesus oh. macaques. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, and pigtail macaques. All different types. Baboons. Yeah, I did government research before I did Really? Oh. Wow, you did government research with macaques and baboons. What yeah. kind of research? You give them like DMT and shit? I uh, know it wasn't the fun stuff, which is why I'll never do ketamine. It was bombs and radiation. Uh, argument. Ketamine is very fun. It is fun. But <laughs> we have a special government project. We want you to test DMT on these apes. <laughs> Report back to us immediately. What was the weirdest thing that happened when you were playing with the baboons? Um, I think it's just more th that they were passed out. I think, you know, that's what brought me to psychedelics was working with primates because there was some weird telepathy shit happening and wow. it just had me going you and i have that's that cool. in common you've been working with baboons and i've been working with baffoons <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i got to uh eat mushrooms and swim with dolphins and i swear that you could almost talk to them i've never heard really you cool. talk about this before tell they me more about this <laughs> sure it's on netflix He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> no it's not do you have a netflix special no, but somebody else does. He, he does, does for me. The, the I don't have to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> the two jokes are completely different. I don't know why you uh, ever say it's that. It's just funny now. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, and I don't know if that guy even has a Netflix special. I don't know, it's probably not there anymore. I don't know. What, do, you, do you know special? Jack the Ripper? Yeah, still up. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> Jack checks us every day. What's, uh, yeah. It's what? my favorite special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness gracious so any other fun facts we should know about you before we let you go i'm an astrologer whoa really can you give one of us our uh, future or something um are you a gemini yeah i am a gemini how'd you know that i just know shit oh my god what am i no it doesn't matter hold on go I'm ahead sassy. read my read my fortune what's gonna happen uh is this what astrologists do am i right well, we we use charts, but I I can tell you. The give North me something good. Give me a good. Give me a good. Red thing band here. uses shots. Joel, shut uh, the fuck up. <laughs> the North Node of Fate is moving through your sign, uh, starting on May fifth. What is this year's something called the North Node of Fate? North is that a Node good thing? Destiny. For you, it's good. Good. Uh, you're gonna carry people through with your voice. So as that, long as you help that the makes community, sense. Yeah. That makes sense. I've been doing that for seven and a half years, so that makes <laughs> complete well, sense. I've been carrying a lot duality, of duality. I guess that was like a fortune cookie that you open. I'm just like, there will be a tomorrow after today. <laughs> Stupid. Come on, you're not know talking about when you get that in your life. This isn't a real fortune. Uh, I spent forty dollars on a Chinese fortune. How do you know about fortune cookies, Jack the Ripper? I'm frequent for that your Chinese rituals. Christy Belich, so much fun. Come back, sign up again, get on again. Let's hear more. Christy Belich, everybody. <laughs> there you go. All right. We had five people sign up. I said we were going to get through four, but we're going to get this fifth one up here real quick for a real quick one and a real quick interview. Here comes Nick Reese, everybody. Woo! Nick Reese. You got one more mic, right, Zach? Okay, good. Hey. I do. Here he is, Nick Reese. So I feel like 2020 has kind of been pretty rough for everybody. I've had... Uh, you know, a lot of plans kind of rescheduled. I know I'm being selfish, I'm not the only one. I mean, Kyle Rittenhouse had a whole shooting plan for that school. And to get thwarted by Zoom meetings at the last minute, I can't imagine the devastation that guy was going through. Just <laughs> terrible. Uh, but, you know, 2020, this whole quarantine has been pretty crazy. I've uh, been watching just a lot of just Netflix and random stuff. My lady's been uh, making me watch a bunch of anime for the first time and I've come to realize anime is just basically Mexican soap <laughs> operas in cartoon form uh, and uh, 
I kind of think 2020 is going to be for time travelers, kind of like what the 13th floor of like a hotel is for like architects. It's just going to like the, the no fly zone. Um, it's going to be interesting just to kind of you know, look look back on it all. But that's that's my minute. Woo! Yeah. All right. Nick Reese is here on this show. He ate a 25 milligram uh, Delta gummy, Delta Eight gummy from the uh, from the in- incredible gummies over at Galaxy Groves. Um, how do you feel right now? It's been about an hour since you ate it. Hour and a half. I- I've been stoned since I was like 14. Really? Okay. Uh, you want to eat two more? Send it. All right. <laughs> here we go. Oh, yeah. Wow! Yeah, he can catch. still catch. This is very incredible. That proves he's been stoned since 14. Oh, he's oh he's got five in his hand. Just do it, dude. Okay, here he go. Oh, he drops one on the ground. Did he, he drop him on the ground the first time you gave it to him? Yeah, he did. He <laughs> likes dropping them on the ground beforehand. He likes uh, it's like uh, it ferments the THC a bit. Okay, how do you think this is gonna go? You just ate, I believe, what was that? Six of them. <gasps> Four of them? Okay, so that's another 100 milligrams of THC. How are you getting back to your cave tonight? He's got the it. stoners He's got in the corner are laughing right now. Gino is the head connoisseur. Gino, what do you think is going to happen to him in the next hour? How are you that's getting home? I have, I have a DD. I have a DD. I'm yeah, flying. A you have a designated yeah. driver. Yeah. He has wow. a Dungeons and Dragons yeah, he tattoo. Has a, <laughs> he has a dirty dick, this guy. <laughs> He's talking to scum size. Hello, come on. No. <laughs> Hello, Jesus. Hello, <laughs> man. Dude, Weird Al is killing me. Nick, so what's been uh, what's been going on in your life? What's been happening since the last time you were on? Been uh, been committing to kill Tony, man. Just Wh- trying, what do you mean? Got got to do uh, just talk right into the tip of that microphone. Just commit been, to kill Tony. Just uh, I kind of made it a goal for myself <laughs> that I was going to be. Uh, present here at as many of these as I could. Oh, well, way to go. Being year. present. You ate 125 <laughs> milligrams of THC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. The, quarantine. the only person to ever say, I want to be present here at Kill Tony yeah, is, the, is the only person we've ever, for some reason, purposefully inebriated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is fun. Looking fresh again. You always have the nice clothes. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you were you. just on... The last episode you were on, you were also on with our friend uh, the Dates' cousin, right? Yeah, yeah. Trey Peacock. Yeah. Trey Peacock and you guys eclipsing over another episode. This is some form of destiny. Do you live anywhere near the Modesto area? No, I live more like Temecula, San Diego. Kind oh, of. that's pretty close. Oh, San Diego. Well, to, like, I, I, you live like, south. Inland Empire, yeah, like like Temecula. Those are three what? completely different places that you just named. Yeah. <laughs> Temecula and San Diego are like right by each other. I live, the Inland Empire is not near either of those. You know, things. I live like in the uh, Temecula North Carolina area. <laughs> yeah. I, I I live in San Jacinto. Like it's, it's San Jacinto. Yeah, no one no one really knows where that's at. So uh, like, I did a Scientology film out there once. Did you? Yep. What was it called? I mean, they didn't tell me. The Scientologists. Uh, yeah. You were really in it? Yeah, I was a background extra in a Scientology film in San Jacinto. I literally yeah. forgot the name of the city until you just said it right there, right now. What year yeah. was this? Uh, two thousand and eleven. Wow. You gotta find this. Did yeah. they pay you? Yep. And, so you're and I had to leave early to come here to the comedy store because it was a Monday night and the shoot was running late. And I said, I got to go. And they said, you shouldn't go. And I said, I need to go. Oh, the Scientologists are not happy when you leave early. Yeah. And they made homemade pizza. It was food that was all prepared in the kitchen there. And oh. they, they didn't have anything from outside of the facility. And there were guards with guns that drove me to the set and out. <laughs> guns? <laughs> the, wow. The, guard, the guards with the guns thing is real. I had an uncle that like worked in there. And he said that there was like guards with like Uzis patrolling the fucking what? grounds. They, they have a, oh. It's a huge compound facility. And they've got guards on every they, single like yeah, straight they, out they, of a what movie. What did you do for the video? I was like uh, uh, somebody who was in the 50s that was listening to uh, their leader uh, give a uh, speech. Wow. Yeah, so they, so they, they, they put a bouffant on my hair, and they wanted to cut my hair. And, I said, and this is when I had longer hair at the time, even longer than this. And, uh, <laughs> it, and, and they put it to the side, you know what I mean? And you were weird about them cutting your hair back in the day. That was like your treasure. So Absolutely. You, said, you like, said no way. Have you seen the, 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 the movie Samson from the Bible? <laughs> no. I mean, they cut his hair, and they lost all his strength. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> then he had to like grow it back, and then he had uh, the, the two pillars. That's and he's good like, enough. Oh, he got you, Jack. Back, he and got then he put it in a head and it's like, oh, thank you. There you go. Out of control he is. All right. <laughs> An applause break. So, uh, 
<laughs> okay, so Nick, what else has been happening in your life other than committing to kill Tony? Tell us something about your personal life down in San Jacinto. Um, your air conditioner broke recently, am I correct? Yeah, super did. It really did? Yeah. When did that happen? Uh, like, like a week and a half ago. And you're a weeks. Capricorn, am I correct? No. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> there goes all... And you're one of the apes she gave ketamine to, correct? Yes. <laughs> You consider yourself more of a baboon or a macaque? Definitely a baboon. What? Definitely a baboon. That right. first guy that went up, he was a macaque. <laughs> so so uh, how about your sex life? What's going on over there? You seem like the kind of guy that uh, masturbates into your own belly button to start the day. You seem engaged. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, Wait, what, Red Band? He seems engaged. Seems yeah, engaged. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm engaged like... Oh, Just kind of, kind of, kind of going through it right now. I she's mad at me right now because I've been coming here every Monday and I told her I'm not sorry. I want it. you to be with me on Mondays. Yeah, why? Is it, like, what else do you do? I, 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 I mean, she. How dare you leave we, the we sweet, did, sweet confines a, of San Jacinto? We have a shitload of animals and stuff. And she How, just, what do you mean by a shitload of animals? Be more specific. Four dogs, three snakes, a lizard, and two cats. What so. the fuck oh, is going small, on over there? It sounds a like a zoo. stable couple. It's, 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 a, it's a fucking zoo. I Why go. do you have so many animals? Because uh, Is it her fault? She, she likes to acquire them, and I don't. How do you end it. up with three snakes? Are they all in separate tanks? Yeah, they're all in separate tanks. What the fuck, dude? Do you have like a huge house? Like, how do you have yeah, that we, many? We have, I mean, we have like a roommate. And we have like a four bedroom, so like we have like plenty of space. It's do you have like all the animals in one room? Um, no. Well, oh, we let no, the dogs no, run no, around. No, no. Like, well, the dogs, the dogs fucking free roam. Like, right. And the snakes. You have cats. Yeah. How many cats? Two cats. Any of the cats ever get near the snake tanks? Uh, one of them does. Like, she like. She paws at the tank and no, shit? No, she just, like, literally lays at the snake, like, lays on top of this one tank, and Ugh. the one snake that she chooses to fucking lay on top of is, like, the only snake that could fucking eat her in, like, a right. heartbeat. You ever like, put, uh, you ever question. take any of the snakes for a walk on a rope or anything like that? You ever put a snake on a rope? Not on a rope. Have you my, ever heard of anyone got, doing uh, such a thing? No, it sounds like you're going to show me. Have you done anything sexual with a snake? I always wonder no, if girls try no, to put that shit would, in their pussy. I would never. I mean, if, if that was going there, I'm not going there after it. All right. This Red was meant to be gross. a quick interview. This was a lot of fun. We're going to talk more about these animals next time you're on. There goes Nick Reese, Nick everybody. Reese. Nick Reese. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're crazy. Ah, do yeah. All right, the microphone is switched. It has been lowered to half staff. That can only mean one thing, everybody. This show is about to go to a whole nother level as I bring up the golden boy, the icon, the uh, the Chicago rattlesnake, the uh, Illinois boy toy, the uh, Wyoming ding. A lang, the uh, <laughs> the uh, the electric goat, ladies and gentlemen. I present to you one of my favorite human beings on the planet, master comedian and improviser, the great Michael Lehrer. They see me rolling. <laughs> oh shit! Seems chaotic. Here he is, Michael Lehrer. Hello, I'm token disabled comedian Michael Lehrer. I wanted to take a week off of talking, so I could get wicked crunked and try new street drugs. So instead of my minutant interview, myself, William Montgomery, and Jack the Ripper as the narrator, will perform an adaptation of The Miracle Worker, the story of OG original cripple, Helen Keller, now, The Curtain, Rises. Across the pond from old London town, in the year of the 1800s, there was a town in Alabama named Robert Dussin, where a blind deaf mute named Ellen Keller terrorized her family. Oh, Keller! <laughs> Motherfucking one you! Helpless, Keller's family called for child crisis manager, Annie Sullivan. Hi, I'm El Annie Sullivan, and I'm here to make Helen Keller uh, chill the fuck out. Fuck you. <laughs> what did you say to me, you little bitch? 
And he continued to terrorize our family, blowing blunt smoke in baby faces, putting empty Sunny D containers back in the fridge. And he wasn't about to get punked by a little blind kid, so she had an idea. The Keller family spoils Helen Keller. You let her eat mashed potatoes with her hands, drink as many Capri Suns as she wants. She needs discipline. I'm taking her to the Kmart parking lot, and we're not coming back until we're flipping Hyundai Elantras. <laughs> Annie was determined to make Helen strong, not just with anabolic steroids, but with resolve. She also began to teach Helen to say the alphabet using her fingers. Spell it with your fingers. P-B-R. Now crawl to the fridge, you bratty fuck, and give me a tall boy. <laughs> What'd you just fucking say? Whoa, whoa, he's got a gun. Hit me again. Hit me again. I'm sorry, Helena. I grew up in an insane asylum surrounded by mutants like you. We played with rats because we didn't have toys. That's why I want to help you, you ungrateful fuck. I'll make you strong. Strong enough to flip Hyundai Elantras. <laughs> While I tried the Ripper killed homeless people in London, never to be caught, and he persevered to make Ellen chill the fuck out and act right. That's it. It's ALS. Good job, Helen. But you're never going to have to need to know those letters. Fuck you. That's it. I warned you. Here comes the taser. <laughs> <laughs> God, there's a mouse in there. <laughs> While Interpol blindly chased me through the canals of London Town, in Robert Dawson, Alabama, Annie Sullivan taught Helen to recognize objects by touch. Feel that, Michael. Feel it. Uh, it's T I T S, tits. <laughs> but is that he- the script? But Helen learned far more than to recognize tits. Where's your water bottle? William, you're blocking the light on Helen. We can't see. This is called water. (laughs) That's called water. (laughs) Once Helen recognized water, the sky was the limit. She started naming everything she touched. Cock, balls. No, that was actually Michael's uh, line. I actually saw Michael's penis last week. That's not a part of the scrub, but... And he did a triple-A job of fixing Ellen, but knew also it was time to leave the Kellers. Man, it's so bittersweet helping rich white people. All of you Kellers are so awful, uh, but you pay so good. I fixed your little bitch, Helen Keller, that deaf, dumb, and blind kid. Sure plays a mean pinball, so I must go. I'll miss your comfortable home and comfortable by slaves, but that is no matter until 2020. I fix that little bitch, Helen Keller, so she shouldn't be an asshole anymore. Annie Sullivan then left the Kellers to where? Who knows? Annie, half blind. I think we all learned a valuable lesson. The miracle worker is sadistic as fuck. Annie Sullivan will be in jail today. Also, the Kellers were wealthy slave owners. Old ass plays suck in so many ways, but the miracle worker, you truly are the worst. But don't take it from me. I've killed an unknown amount of people 150 years ago and was never caught. Thank you for supporting live theater. I'm Jack the Ripper. Wow. Very impressive. Very impressive. I love your earrings. There you go. Hand the microphone back to Helen Keller there. You can tell it's Helen Keller because uh, she's wearing a face shield with the words Helen Keller above it. Can, you, can we, uh, there we go. Here comes a nice, fresh, uninfected yeah. microphone. For I hope that's just his regular face shield, too, Michael that he Laird. rolls down the street with. That is incredible, oh, Michael. Another. That s- was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that hair. Another yeah. stellar performance. Zach, can you zoom in on this uh, this uh, champion of champions, the great Michael Lair? Very here. fun. And what a wonderful <laughs> afternoon. For real, so much fun. So many laughs. That was, since Corona, the most laughs. 
from i mean there's like six people here yeah and it felt like a big room it did so bravo you motherfucker i absolutely Woo. agree and uh no better way to end a great episode than with uh the chairman of the board himself the great michael lair michael lair comedy.com Michael nice Lair job. Comedy on all social media sites. Anything else you're promoting this week, Michael? Um, um, I new merch? fell. Oh, you and, fell. Um, yeah, look. Uh, oh, I know what you're bro. doing. This is a big promo for the fall collection yeah. of merch. My right hand doesn't work as good anymore. Okay, this so. is getting real sad real quick. So pray for me. Oh, yes. Prayers are going to work. Everyone knows it's the one cure against ALS. <laughs> prayers, everybody. <laughs> Thank you to the great Michael Lair. Again, MichaelLairComedy.com. Here comes the drawing from Ryan J. E. Belt right about here. That's what he did. Look at that. Everybody's in it. Jack the Ripper, Eileen Wernos, Richard Ramirez. Uh, the dead people on a the bunch ground. of dead people. David Lucas and William Montgomery, Michael Lair, I do all believe are murdered. I'm in the middle holding it down. You got Red Band and Alex Hooper. Alex Hooper was with us tonight. Thanks everybody. Thanks for having me, guys. Alex Hooper is on social media at Hooper Hair Puff. What else, Alex? You're always doing a bunch of shows. What do you got coming up? Go to HooperComedy.com, everybody. I'll be back on the road very soon, and lots of stuff happening right now on my website. So go get it. Go to his website. Check out what he did on AGT. The guy has real balls. Went out there and uh, was absolutely ruthless to those uh, network uh, normies over there hosting AGT. Uh, gave him some pure evil. Fun times. Always a pleasure to hang out with you. The Thank great you, Alex Hooper. Again, that's Hooper Hair Puff on social media. Believe it or not, people, uh, Jack the Ripper was actually Jeremiah Watkins. <laughs> Jeremiah, tell us about your podcast. Uh, my podcast, Jeremiah Wonders, uh, recent episodes. We've got some great Dr. Phil episodes with Adam Ray on there, Jonas Poppers from uh, History Hyenas, Sam Roberts from the uh, Jim and Sam Show, and my Venmo is at Jeremiah Watkins. And if you like breakfast shows, eating breakfast with Jeremiah is on my YouTube. And there a new go. merch store, jamiwalkins.com, with a t-shirt that says, I'm Jack the Ripper. There you go. <laughs> Jesse Jetski Johnson, I do believe, was Eileen Wernos tonight. She's everywhere, uh, Jetski Johnson, including jetskijohnson.com, where you can get one of the brand new Anytime Ornaments. If you're into Christmas, it would work perfectly as a Christmas ornament. I saw them. They were adorable. They are amazing. I already uh, made a reservation for three of them. I'm going to hang them in different rooms all around my place. Uh, and I'm really excited. They are adorable. She hand makes everything. You have your choice of uh, strong plastic or uh, glass. And she makes special jet ski anytime ornaments. Am I right? Yeah, that was like, can I record that for <laughs> <laughs> my website? What else, Jet Ski? Um, Mitch Burrow and I have been on the show a lot. Uh, we have a podcast that mm -hmm. records here at the store. Tony's been on it. Red Band was on it. It's through the Looking Glass on the Comedy Store YouTube page. And That's right. The great Chroma Chris right there. <laughs> Chroma, what do you think about tonight's episode? Oh, it was a bloody good one, Tony. Hey, you can uh, you can follow me at uh, Chroma Chris, or you can follow my cult. That's at the right. Ranch. I love it, and absolutely positively, right here, Joelberg, Joel Jimenez. Everybody, come on! It is Joelberg. Joel's got a podcast, Mostly Sorry, which is also what he is on social media at Mostly Sorry. What what else is going on, Joel? Hail Satan. All right. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Hinchcliffe. We go over everything roasting that uh, I and a lot of uh, the people in roast history have ever done. I got to have you on that sometime, Alex. A lot of fun interviews coming up, including the man that's written for every single televised roast that's ever happened, the legend Mike Ferrucci. Um, fun things happening. Uh, a bunch of new merch up, TonyHinchcliffe.com. The remaining... Uh, 
of this uh, summer's uh, Kill Tony shirts are available at DeathSquad.tv. Yeah, there's only a few left, and so get those before the new one comes out. Also, we just uh, launched the Brothers and Curse of Patreon. You go to patreon.com, Brothers Podcast, so That's check that out. We were doing like little mini shows inside of it, so it's not, if you like the show, you're going to love these little mini shows that we're doing. That's great. Remember to support our sponsors, and that supports us, all of us, and uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. 